Joining me now, as he does every week, is the host of the US Report on Sky News, James Morrow, of course, one third of The Outsiders as well. James, great to see you. How do you see the events of this week playing out? I mean, the legal ramifications are one thing, but let's start with the politics, because at the moment, if anything, it bolsters or emboldens Trump politically. Yeah, I mean, this is a really complicated situation, Kieran, and viewers out there who really want to get their mind around what's going on have to hold a few different things in their head all at the same time. I mean, the first is, of course, that Trump's been his own worst enemy here. He had a lot of opportunities to stop this case from getting to the point where it is. And now the Espionage Act is being thrown at him, which is very, very serious indeed. At the same time, though, Trump has a real case that this is a witch hunt, that's a prosecution of him, that this is all part of a huge effort by prosecutors, by law enforcement, by all sorts of folks to keep him and him alone from becoming president again in 2024. So he's right about that. Now, the politics of this, you know, I think they actually wind up playing, at least in the short to medium term, into his hands. The data point for that, Kieran, is the first indictment. Uh, that didn't hurt him at all. In fact, he raised millions yeah. of dollars off of that. And the same thing here, he's going to raise more money off it, but also he's still two to one over DeSantis in all the primary states and against Joe Biden, 2% up in the general. And one of the interventions this week, I want to get your thoughts on Bill Barr, former Trump attorney general. He was adamant when he appeared on Fox News that even if, if uh, part of these claims proved to be true, Donald Trump is toast. What did you make of that? Well, look, I mean, he's not wrong. There's no love loss between Barr and Donald Trump, you know, that's for sure. But at the same time, you know, and the vagaries of the American justice system being what they are at the moment, you know, if they nail him on an Espionage Act charge, there's no, there's no way to spin your way out of that. That's potentially really, really serious stuff. You can say, well, just because he's convicted, he can still run. But, I mean, this is playing for all the marbles here. This, the, these are not kidding around charges. You know, it's much more serious, I think, than the Georgia case, which I think is pretty circumstantial, um, much more uh, serious than I think even January 6th, which I think, again, you know, circumstantial. And also, Donald Trump has a very good case to say he told people to go home on that. So, you know, that's less of a thing. But this here, you've got physical evidence of these documents. It's all disputed. It's all very messy. But the way federal prosecutors are in the U.S., you know, it's very hard to get around one of these indictments once they throw it at you. Yes, OK, so that's the, the legal side. With, with those Trump, rusted on Trump supporters who aren't going to buy any of it, how worried should we be about the potential for civil unrest again? Look, I don't think civil unrest is the, you know, worry here. And I, frankly, I think that some of the stuff about here, you know, oh, Trump is an existential threat to democracy, I think is really nuts. And it shows a bit of projection on the part of people on the left who are so, you know, wrapped up in their own head about Trump that they wind up doing all sorts of things, you know, like all the stuff we talked about in the Durham report a couple of weeks ago, um, to try and stop this guy. And I mean, that's, that's not good. And, you know, so the threats are coming from both sides here on that. I think actually what happens is that the fundamental American sense of fairness, in the same sense Australians have a sense of fair go, they see the way, you know, Joe Biden has very credible uh, evidence against him for bribery, corruption, also keeping documents in his own lock garage, and he skates, you know, and, and then it's all after, over Trump. Um, I think that does tend to tip some people into the Trump camp. I've talked to a lot of Republicans who are now saying, you know, I was kind of hoping for DeSantis, but now, you know what, no, nah, it's, it's got to be Trump because he is the only guy who can stop this whole politicization of the FBI, the Justice Department, which polls now show most Americans think are a political tool, which is bad. And so with the primaries looking like a, a, a clear lead for Trump, if not a clear win already, it's still a long way to go, but it's hard to see how DeSantis can drag that back. Oh. Anything's possible, but... At this stage, Trump, Trump the red-hot favourite. And what about middle America? How does all of this drama play out there? Does it, does it help Trump win back or reduce that deficit from the last election? Well, I mean, you know, there's a lot of different middle Americas we're talking about. And I think the general conventional wisdom right now is that, um, you know, in places like Iowa and stuff, it's doing very well with them. But in suburban America, you know, there's always that sort of suburban vote, female vote. You know, that's that sort of... Um, 
demographic, there's a lot of concern that, of course, all of this chaos winds up putting those people off board. But those people, you know, we saw a little bit of a flavor of that in Annalise's package before. You know, people are really yeah. concerned about Joe Biden being in his 80s, not in great shape, you know, so the question is, does he wind up being the guy who leads the ticket? Personally, Kieran, I don't think so. James Morrow will be interesting to see. Thank you, as always. Great to see you.